Good morning, boys and girls. It is me, your humble neighborhood friendly stroke assaulter. <clears throat> we're going to continue on with the letters of the alphabet. Today we're going to do B is for balance. That is right, B is for balance, or lack thereof. So, about 40% of those that will have a stroke will report some kind of balance issue. Now, I appreciate this all depends on where your stroke has left you. Right? Uh, exactly what limitations has your stroke presented? Exactly how disrupting is your stroke on your life? Right? Because, and this also depends where you are in your stroke recovery journey. Because I'm going to admit, I lucked out. I had a fairly moderate stroke with side effects and limitations for the better part I'm able to work through. So I, I'm going to I'm gonna say I may not be the best exemplar here. Now, when I started my physical therapy uh, with the wonderful lady that is my physiotherapist, she is a brilliant woman. She is an amazing, amazing physiotherapist. I owe her a debt of gratitude. Um, so... There's things I just couldn't do. Um, and I'll be honest, the first couple days after my sto stroke, I tried to push myself to do them. And it, it didn't go well. Yeah. So, first thing I'm going to say is if you have a balance issue, you may want to consider just going with it, right? Just do what you need to do and don't do more than you need to. Now... So a lot of things when it comes to balance you don't really think about, right? Because remember the last time you had problems dealing with balance, you were in short pants and diapers and you actually don't remember it. Because um, you don't really actually have your first conscious memory until age three to three and a half. Anything you remember before then is things you've been told, pictures you've seen, stories you've heard, things like that. So the last time you actually had a balance problem is your baby. Um, and in many ways... Uh, having a stroke can be very, sort of reduces you to a childlike state in some state in, in some cases because you have to be, be able to learn how to do things again or navigate your world again, right? In ways that you haven't had to do since, you know, you were four, three, maybe two, possibly six. Who knows? So, with the balance problem may come dizziness uh, and that can be triggered by some things is that the stroke is that the medication is that the medication and the stroke what part of that triangle does that lie in but in some cases they might not even know right and again I'll include the links here for the documents that I'm using so some people you might get a vertigo like sensation I had that and occasionally still get it um, you know, uh, you feel like the room might be spinning. And I mean, worse than when you were a teenager, stole alcohol from your parents' liquor cabinet, went out, got drunk, and you thought if you put a foot on the floor when you're in your bed that the room would stop spinning? Yeah, no, it's worse than that. Um, I could get vertigo from, you know, standing up. I could get vertigo from sitting down. I could get vertigo from doing stairs. I, you know, I, for about a week or so there, maybe, maybe almost a month, I was getting vertigo at times that could be debilitating, right? Could be, you know, event ending. Like, oh, no, we're done time. Right. Um, now, because you don't really need balance when you're sitting, you don't really need balance when you're lying down. You predominantly need balance when standing or standing and moving. Uh, they happen to call that walking. So for some of you, in the initial throes of your recovery and rehabilitation journey, you may need some form of assistance device to help you walk. Right? Uh, walker, cane, uh, two canes, uh, trekking poles. There, there are many options there. Uh, wheelchair would be the ultimate, right? So, depending on what you need to help you through that, some people may need some assistance devices to get them through that. 
Now, because you may have balance problems, that might cause some concentration problems. Uh, with me, I found it is predominantly in stores, shelves, moving, looking for things. So I have to move, I have to move, I have to scan, I have to track, right? And as I'm moving, right, I'm scanning for the item I want. Now I have to track its location. And then, God forbid, they put it on the bottom two shelves in the supermarket, and it's like a canned good because that's just a shit show, right? Because now i got to bend over, right? Um, when I bend over, uh, would not make me very popular in prison. I, I, I accept that. Um, not that I want to be popular in prison, just going to put that out there. When I bend over, so... My legs are, parallel, are perpendicular to the ground, my, but my upper body is parallel to the ground or relatively close to it. Yeah, I get uh, vertigo, I have balance problems, it creates headaches. Um, may or may not be the medication, may or may not be the stroke. Yeah, they, they don't know. Okay. Now, for some people, right, um... Now, for me, if I used to be able to text and walk, now I can't do that. I can't do the two things at the same time. And I'm not sure exactly why that is, but I know I become a bit unhinged in the balance department if you want to uh, want me to text and walk. It's just not a reality right now. Um, I've tried it, it still feels a bit unnerving. Okay. Um, now, because of this, um, some people, when it comes to balance, may have perceptual problems, right? Uh, they may not be able to properly perceive where they are in time and space, right? Uh, you know, so they may have um, problems dealing with things that they don't understand how to deal with things, right? Um, what I mean by that is you may find people that, as they're moving, um, they may have difficulty trying to figure out how to get down that aisle, right? So I need to get down that aisle in Walmart or the grocery store or Home Depot or whatever. And there's people in that aisle. Now I've got to sort of plan my route around those people. Um, that can make things a little bit difficult, right? Um, and that's just a thing, unfortunately. Now... You may have problems with some people after their stroke, they have what's called spatial neglect uh, or spatial inattention. Um, that means you don't perceive a part of your body. So your center line is here, right? That's your normal center line. Um, if I was having spatial neglect problems, I might be forgetting my right side exists. So my center line is now here. Right, or here. So instead of walking through the door, right, I now walk into the door, right? And that's not because you're blind um, or you're having vision problems. That's because your brain has been rewired due to the stroke to forget that, right? Anything but to the right side of the nose does not exist. So you're going to walk into doors. You might find, um, you know, you forget to move your, you, if you have a strongly weak leg situation now, you forget to move the weak leg. Um, you may have problems strong leg, weak leg, where now it's more of a shuffle walk. So you kind of drag the foot as opposed to lift in place. Um, some people find they can't sit up well um, to that point where they're pushing or pulling themselves from a laying position to a seated or semi-seated position so they're now using their good arm um, right, or their non-impacted side and they're using that to either grab something and pull themselves up or they're using it to push themselves up right uh, so that could be a problem with your balance now vision problems you may experience a change in your prescription um, post-stroke. Right? There is a possibility that some people may have vision problems whereby your prescription changes post-stroke. Right? Um, that could also include things like double vision. You might have difficulty focusing. You might have difficulty um, 
just eye movements, right? So they always do that, like follow my finger, right? Um, they're trying to find out if you're having difficulty actually visualizing a certain part of your environment. You may have blind patches, right? Um, you may have problems making adjustment to light. You may have problems with flashing lights, um, you know, so, and then for me, uh, one of the things I'm working on in physiotherapy is I get on the wobble board and I'll maintain my balance and then she'll have me close my eyes. And then the world record right now for wobble board, eyes closed standing without an attempt to go falling is about 11 seconds, right? That's the new world record, about 11 seconds. Now, with the next thing called ataxia, it's main, mainly means clumsy or uncoordinated movements. Well, if you were a bit of a klutz before, ataxia is not going to help. Let's just be honest there. But ataxia basically means people have difficulty pr producing and creating the movements in the right sequence fast enough to maintain their balance or to avoid losing their balance or the potential to recover from a slip trip fall, right? So something that would have been a slip or a trip that you would normally be like, hey, grab that handrail or, you know, steady myself against a wall and now becomes a fall, right? So in ataxia, it's a thing, right? Um, now, because some of your medications may cause or exacerbate um, dizziness, you need to familiarize yourself with your medications and the side effects they're in. So some medications might be a bit more difficult than others, uh, or not so difficult, bad word choice, uh, might be a bit more interesting than others and how they impact your balance. And please, if you are considering, a, considering any kind of medication change, don't just do that on your own. Please consult your you know properly trained and licensed healthcare, healthcare practitioners to get the right input, right? Now, does lack of balance or balance problems mean that it's going to be a forever thing? No. No. There may be some limitations you may have to learn to incorporate into your world, um, and they will lessen over time. Um, I still have balance problems. Uh, if you've ever been with me in a store uh, or someplace, you'll know every so often I will back up towards a wall or move closer to a shelf or something that I can hold on to or, or get in contact with because I know I'm becoming a bit unbalanced. Unhinged? Lack of balance? I'm going to fall, right? So physiotherapy definitely is an advantage. Physiotherapy definitely will assist you with this. I know in my specific case, my physiotherapist has been brilliant. Um, and in fact, she practices um, patient-centered um, um, approach. Uh, I've told her there are some exercises I used to be able to do that um, without any difficulty or issue when it came to balance. Um, and I want to be able to do those again. And she's incorporated those into my PT regimen. Um, and then I said, well, you know, stairs are an issue, right? Let's talk about stairs and balance. Right, so you have to go upstairs and you have to go downstairs. Um, going up the stairs, what I found helps because your point of view doesn't change much as you go up the stairs. Find a spot in the world that you can look at and maintain looking at that. Right. Now going down the stairs because if you're going up the stairs, right, um, you know, falling won't be as bad. Going down the stairs, falling can definitely turn into oh fuck, right, oh damn. Oh shit! Oh, ouch! 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 ouch, ouch. Right. Um, so, going down the stairs because you got to take your foot and lift it up and then put it out into unknown space and then put it down. Right. Um, you are going to be, and I know I was a little, a little bit overly cautious at times, um, and sometimes a bit over cautious can be worse because you're not as fluid in your motions. Um, the best thing I can suggest is when you do stairs, try to be as reciprocating in your pacing and gait as possible, right? You want to be very fluid, very deliberate, not sort of slow and cautious and gangly, right? Um, and so we've been doing six stories 
of stairs at the hospital and the only rule is I'm not allowed to use, and this is my rule, not hers, I'm not allowed to use a handrail or very minimal use of the handrail. Um, and again, going down, I do the same thing. I find a spot on the wall, a landmark somewhere, and I maintain contact on that. So that way, you know, I'm learning to retrain myself to maintain my balance on stairs because stairs, they can still be a bit of a difficulty, right? So there are various balance retraining exercises that are in the toolbox that your physiotherapist will have, right? And there are many, many things you can do to maintain and redevelop a sense of balance, right? However, if you have difficulty with a sense of balance, you have to be cognizant that because you have difficulty with the sense of balance, you may be at a heightened risk for a fall, right? So you need to do everything you can to lessen the potential of your fall because a vast majority of stroke uh, assaulters report a, a major fall event within the first year. So when it comes to things you can do to um, increase your recovery and rehab potential when it comes to your balance, please engage your physiotherapist, engage your neurologist, engage any other medical practitioner you need, right? They will help provide you the, the guidance, support, activities, exercises that will uh, help make uh, your recovery a better thing, right? They'll help make things a little bit easier for you uh, they'll help give you some guidance and they'll even call foul because there were some exercises I were trying to do initially in the first throes of my recovery that my physiotherapist basically said, hey, you're being an idiot. That's too soon for that. Like your brain is still getting used to the fact that it, it didn't, wasn't successful in killing you. Let's not move to that right away. So just remember B is for balance or lack thereof. And if you happen to have been enjoying what has been going on here for almost three months now, be three months and five days from now um, please like share comment subscribe if you happen to be going through your own stroke recovery journey uh, please like share subscribe if you happen to know someone that is uh, going through this the supporting of or going through their own stroke recovery journey please recommend the channel to them like share subscribe leave comments down below if there's something you want to see me cover and if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke that being facial droop uh, the inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, the inability to smile equally effectively or at all, uh, slurred speech, stuttering, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, general body weakness, weakness on one side, or inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple could save a life.